Hello and welcome to Tea is Good, Books Are Better, the podcast where we drink tea and talk about books. I'm Raven. I'm Jess. Shout out to our Patreons. Patrons. Patrons. <laughs> Shout out to our patrons. <laughs> Tobias, Eric, uh-huh. Jake, and Barum. Yes. Yay! <laughs> Thank you to our patrons. Thank you all. <laughs> quick before we get started i just want to mention if you guys hear like loud beeping in the background uh that's probably coming from my end they're filming a movie outside my house and there's this big crane that they keep moving oh wow still yeah they're filming till like till like past midnight tonight i think oh whoa yeah so if you hear loud beeping that's the crane moving (laughs) (laughs) cool Yes. Well, it gets annoying real fast. <laughs> oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what are we drinking today? Um, I believe it is my Christmas ginger tea. Still drinking that. <laughs> Can you get on like the pumpkin spice train or something? But that means buying more tea when I already have some. <laughs> <laughs> There's never too much tea. <laughs> Johnny tells me there is. <laughs> oh. What does he know? <laughs> I'm drinking. You got pumpkin spice? No. It's a pumpkin oh. Earl Grey. What? Yeah. Can you That's believe so that shit? Yeah. Jake oh, surprised jelly. me with it. Wow. Well, I'm going to find it next time I come over. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was here the last time you came. Wait, maybe it wasn't. Oh. It's I just went to my team. go-to. It, David? Nice. Yeah, and uh, he also got me a little Halloween mug to go with it. Yeah. It's like all black, but when you fill it up with hot water, little like colored eyes appear all over it. Oh, cool. That yeah. sounds fun. Yeah. Uh, what's yeah. your go-to when you come to my place? I just grabbed the peppermint one. Yeah. I don't remember the other thing. It's just peppermint something. Is that but the one in a box? Yep. Yeah. Twinings. Okay, I think that Vanilla. Yeah, peppermint. vanilla, peppermint, something, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was pretty good. It's good when you have a sore throat. Mm-hmm. Good in my tummy. We actually have, if you have, a, like, an upset stomach at any point, we have one that's for upset stomachs. <laughs> oh, what? Wow. Yeah, it's called Tummy Ease. Ooh, I might like that one. Mm-hmm. Okay, where did we leave <laughs> off our characters? Ah, <laughs> uh, Jamie last time. It's bombarded by images, like, fa- fantasies. How do you say it? Uh, he's imagine he imagines his sister uh fucking other men while continuing oh. to hold <laughs> vigil at his father's <laughs> rotting corpse. I don't think I would say those are fantasies. <laughs> Not fantasies. He he that's all he can think about. Okay. Invasive <laughs> thoughts. Yeah. He's bombarded by invasive thoughts of his sister yes. fucking other men. Yuck. While he is holding vigil at his father's rotting corpse. Have we really not seen him since then? I have no memories. That was his last chapter, maybe. We've barely had chapters with Jamie. Probably this is the third one. But we've definitely seen him in Cersei's chapters. Yeah, which I don't recall the last time. (laughs) Probably she was spitting fire at him in disgust. Probably. She doesn't stop doing that in this book, so... (laughs) Mm-mm-mm-mm. Well, maybe it'll be in her, where we left her off. The Queen Regent. Tom and Marjorie get married, which infuriates Cersei. So probably Jimmy last time was pacing the wedding hall with his white cloaks. Right. Yes. And getting told off by Cersei. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> She is infuriated by this marriage because she sees it as the Tyrells winning. 
and she also burns down the Tower of the Hand. Right. Mm -hmm. I wonder if anything would be enough for her. Like, I feel like even if she had everything she wants, there would still be <laughs> a thousand things that she isn't happy with. <laughs> Perhaps. She seems like the sort who like, needs everything to be her way. Yeah. And, like constant perfection. Yeah. So as long as other people exist. <laughs> <laughs> never happy. She'll never be happy. She'll never be happy. Exactly. Okay. Um, so we're starting with chapter... Jamie. <laughs> chapter Jamie. Yeah. Okay. This is chapter 16. Jamie is part of his father's funeral procession, taking him out of King's Landing. Finally. <laughs> Dang, I wonder how long they had that running corpse hanging out. Dude, you know they have that for the queen. Oh, I remember that now. <laughs> it's literally her coffin just sitting out in a open... I don't know. Is it a church? I don't know. Somewhere. But people yeah. are, like, coming to visit and pay their respects. And I literally thought about this when I learned about that. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, whoa, this is uncanny. <laughs> <laughs> wow. His father's body is taken through the gate of the gods rather than the lion's gate, which feels wrong to him. Mm -hmm. he, I think that, I didn't write this down, but he thinks to himself that his father was definitely a lion, but never claimed to be a god or something like that. Okay, yeah. Jamie joins his uncle Kevin, Kavan, at the front of the column. Sir Kavon asks Jamie if her grace has a last command for him. Jamie says he's not here for Cersei, he's here to say farewell to his father. Kevin points out that he was Cersei's father as well, and Jamie has to remind him that he's not Cersei. <laughs> uh, Kevin then asks how fares the king, which seems to imply Jamie isn't doing his job as Lord Commander of the King's Guard, since he's here rather than with the king. Jamie tells his uncle that he needs to make peace with Cersei. Kevin and Cersei need to make peace. Kevin didn't realize they were at war. He says she wants to rule so she can rule. He just wants to be left out of it. He wants to go home with his son and see Lancel married. Jamie knows Lancel is riding only ten yards behind them, and he thinks about what Tyrion said about Cersei fucking him. Jeez! He can't stop <laughs> thinking about it. He's oh like, God. here I was, all loyal to my sister, and she's freaking around. I mean, what else are you going to do when your brother gets taken hostage? <laughs> Weep and mourn? Never. Never. Fuck my cousin? <laughs> 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 Fuck yeah. Uh, Jamie has been trying to catch Lancel alone, possibly to interrogate him, but it doesn't really say. Mm. Um, but he's had no luck so far and he keeps telling himself that Tyrion was lying Okay. the topic of Sandor Clegane comes up with Kevin they had heard he is raiding along the trident with Beric Dondarrion Jaime warns his uncle to keep his knights around him and Kevin takes it as a threat when Jaime was only cautioning him because Clegane is dangerous Jaime brings up the king's hand thing and Kevin tells him that Cersei knows his terms and they have not changed Kevin says to tell her that the next time Jamie is in her bed chambers. <gasps> Shots fired. <laughs> then he gallops ahead, and Jamie must acknowledge that Kevin knows the truth about him and Cersei. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> A lot has changed, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome home. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie starts to worry that Cersei might do him harm, since Kevin would then know about Tommen and Marcella as well. Anyway, I thought that was interesting because Jamie was so willing to dish out harm at the start of this series to protect their gross little secret. Yeah, yeah. So I wonder if the secret is just less important to him now, or if he just doesn't want a Lannister to get hurt. He's changed a lot, because mm -hmm. I feel like before Jamie wouldn't have waited around to get Lancel alone to talk to him. He would have hunted Lancel down mm. and probably killed him. Do you think he's not as confident now without his hand? Maybe. I feel like his personality has changed. He's no longer as impulsive anymore. Right. I feel like. 
He yeah. thinks things through a lot more, and he's just not as violent, I feel like. I mean, I guess that makes sense, because he's kind of useless now. <laughs> in a physical sense. Like, he's not going to be able to get in a fight and win. Yeah, he's not as intimidating, probably. Well, yeah, I think he knows that he can't just be as ballsy as he used to be, because he will lose! Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's got nothing to, like, back up the bold words anymore. No. And maybe that's why he keeps, like using his Lannister name now instead of, like, pulling his sword what? out. You know? <laughs> like Yeah. Could be. Now he has to resort to what Tyrion did. Yeah! Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> he knows what it's like now. Um, <laughs> no, but yeah, I remember thinking that, like, oh, he's saying this a lot. Like, saying, oh, you don't want to be the man who I tell my father's the oh, yeah, yeah. or whatever. Um, he said that shit a lot. He did. He did. Using his father as his only weapon. Yeah, and I remember I kept thinking, like, damn, this is... again? <laughs> <laughs> like, come up with a new move, Jamie. <laughs> what he's got. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of all he has at this point. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. It's things like that that just make these characters feel so real. Mm hmm I love that. Yeah. The column catches up and Lancel rides past. Jamie calls out to him that his new wife, who has been married before, will be pleased to show him what goes where. And he's clearly trying to get under Lancel's skin. Or get mm -hmm. him to admit to something. Yeah. Jamie tells himself that Cersei would sooner have Robert's corpse between her legs than Lancel. And that evil bastard Tyrion should have lied about something more believable. <laughs> Okay, Jamie. <laughs> you wish. Yep. As Jamie rides through the castle gates, he spots several knights riding at a quintain. Uh, which is like jousting. Okay. He tries to think of ways that he could hold the shield and lance now with only one hand, but there are major issues with all of his ideas, and he admits that his jousting days are done. Yeah. For admits sure. to himself anyway. <laughs> The Knight of Flowers is there, and he rides superbly. Jamie mm -hmm. thinks it's a shame he won't be able to try him again. Jamie makes it to Magor's Holdfast, where Cersei is in her solar with Tommen and Lord Merryweather's nearish wife. The three of them are laughing at Grandmaster Pycelle. Jamie asks what JP missed, and Cersei makes an insulting comment about his hand. Or lack of a hand. <laughs> Jamie realizes the queen is in her cups, and he doesn't like that she's been drinking more and more when she used to scorn her husband, Robert Baratheon, for the same reason. I guess, uh, when you're the king or queen, it's, <laughs> it's the drink that helps to get you through all the stress. Yeah. <laughs> they need a way to relax. Yep. Cersei tells Maester Pycelle to share the tidings with Jamie, which makes the maester look uncomfortable. He tells Jamie that there has been a bird. Lawless has delivered a strong, healthy son, and with her new husband Bronze encouragement, named him Tyrion. Jamie, Ooh. <laughs> yeah, ooh the tea. <laughs> Jamie can't help but laugh. He says to Cersei that she's been looking everywhere for Tyrion, and he's been in Lawless's womb this whole time. Cersei and Lady Merryweather laugh that the child was probably born deformed, and they'll send him a lion cub as a gift. Cersei has a look in her eyes, though. Something destructive, which fills Jamie with disquiet. It reminds him of Aerys Targaryen and how burning his enemies would arouse him. Yuck. Hi. Jamie would hear Queen Rayla's cries through the bedroom door on nights after Aerys gave a man to the flames. Whoa. Jamie had pointed out to another of the King's Guard that they are supposed to protect her as well, and was told yes, but not from him. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. And over time, the queen deteriorated along with her husband. Mm -hmm. Something I did notice, if you have your book in front of you. Uh, yeah. On page 330, tell me if your book has this. At the start of the last paragraph, the word Aris Targaryen, Targaryen has a hyphen in it. Yeah, I see that. What the heck? Right? Mm hmm. It's Targ Dash Arian. What happened there? I don't know. 
That's fit. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very random typo. Yeah. <laughs> that it makes me What's wonder. The yeah, well, it makes me wonder if, like, when George is writing, if he just kind of uses codes for people's names. And okay. So that he can write quicker and then goes back in afterwards and fills in the rest of the name. Mm hmm. Because I know people who do write like that. So I wonder if he would just write Targ instead of Targaryen, so he wouldn't have to waste time writing in the whole word. Yeah. So maybe he, like, went back in afterwards and then... Could be. ...left in a hyphen by the st I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's just a, a guess. But... It is weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's very odd. Yeah. <laughs> Makes more sense that it would be, like, another letter, not a hyphen. <laughs> if there were yeah. to be a typo. Anyway, it always fascinates me when, like, huge books that are on their, like, tenth reprint still have typos in them. <laughs> uh, yeah. Jamie asks Cersei for a word, and she dismisses the others. When they're gone, Jamie points out that Lady Merryweather is one of Marjorie Tyrell's companions. She's informing on Cersei. Cersei says that's obvious, but she's getting information on Marjorie as well. Jamie is doubtful, so Cersei tells him that she's learned the Queen of Thorns keeps a chest of coins in her wheelhouse. Old gold from before the conquest. Okay. So? <laughs> What's so interesting about that? What is the wheelhouse? Okay. Old coins from before the war? Apparently it's a part of a boat or ship serving as a shelter for the person at the wheel. <laughs> and they're old coins from before the war, right? from before the conquest which is oh from back before the Targaryens maybe wow. but I mean is that really that interesting I don't know what to do with that information but yeah it's like oh the Tyrells oh. are rich I had no idea <laughs> yeah they got they got that old money yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool, but I don't know how that would work back then. Like, would it be worth more because it's older? Like, I don't know if that works. Yeah. Maybe it's useless because it's a different coin? I don't know. But I feel like if that's the information she's getting from Lady Merriweather, I don't know if she's actually getting information on Marjorie. Do you Probably. know what I mean? Like, that is not that spicy. <laughs> That's not, like, the tea, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that seems to like... To me, I don't really trust <laughs> Lady Merryweather. Oh, no. I think that she's gonna fuck Cersei over so hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm kind... I'm here for that, you know? <laughs> I'm interested. <laughs> like, I can't wait. <laughs> Cersei thinks she's getting the scoop, but I think Lady Merryweather is just feeding her information that's like, you can't really do much with it, but sounds believable and interesting enough to like, make you wonder what to do with it, like you said. Mm -hmm. That's my theory. Yeah. Making herself seem use useful. Yeah. Jamie tells Cersei that their uncle commented on her absence, but Cersei is not concerned. Jamie says they should make up, make peace, because Cersei can make good use for him, and she still needs a hand. Cersei says maybe she will go with Lady Merryweather's husband. Jamie remembers that Eris exiled Lord Merryweather's grandfather and seized his lands. Cersei points out that Robert gave some back, and the Merryweathers would be pleased to recover the rest. Jamie asks if this is about pleasing some Mirish whore. He thought it was about governing the realm. Cersei says she governs the realm. <laughs> Jamie thinks to himself that she believes she's Lord Tywin with tits, but she's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> she rules with emotion where Tywin did with cold calculations. Her fury had been fearful when she found out Stannis was helping at the wall. Um, yeah, I am totally with him there. She thinks she's, like, so smart and, like, so yeah, she clever. <laughs> definitely does. And it's, like, kinda cringe. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie had also heard that she meant to make Orain Waters, a man of one in twenty, the master of ships. 
She says he would be well suited, and Tommen needs some young men about him in place of all these wrinkled greybeards. Which once again makes Jamie think about Tyrion's words. She's been fucking Lancel and Osmond Kettleblack and Moonboy for all I know. Uh, yeah, she is surrounding uh, herself with young men. <laughs> she has a type. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. And that type is whatever looks the most like herself. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Or a young Jamie. Yeah, but Jamie looks like her. I don't True. think it's about Jamie. I think like a little bit like Lannister. Yeah. Well, I yeah. I mean, I I'm starting to think that she only ever fucked Jamie because Jamie looks like her. Mm-hmm. Probably. They argue about who should take what position. Finally, Jamie tells her to listen to herself. She's seeing dwarfs and shadows and making foes of friends. Uncle Kevin is not her enemy, and Jamie is not her enemy. Cersei explodes that she begged Jamie for help and he refused her. He chose his vows over her when he can't say the same about slaying Eris. She then orders him to leave and throws a cup at his head. Classic Cersei. Yeah. She used to, like, tell Ned that her and Jamie were, like, were one person, like, meant to be together, like, in the womb together, blah blah blah. Like, always meant to be. And that they're one. Yeah. And so that genuinely makes me think that, like, that's her narcissism coming through. Yeah, I feel like they were one as long as she, as long as he did what she said. Exactly. Wanted. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Later at White Sword Tower, Loras Tyrell walks in and he and Jamie have a brief conversation about the jousting. The presence of the White Book starts a conversation about previous members of the Kingsguard. Most have been forgotten, only the best are remembered, and the worst. Jamie points at the page he has open and says this man was a bit of both. Loras asks who, as he doesn't recognize the arms. Ten black pellets on a scarlet field. Jamie tells him they belonged to Kristen Cole, who served the first Viserys and the second Aegon. They called him Kingmaker. Kingmaker! Yo! Yeah, man, I read that. I was like, Johnny, Johnny. Oh, well, uh, yeah, I was reading this in bed, and I got to that, and I was, I gasped so loud, and like rolled over and showed Jake. <laughs> uh, for those who have no idea why we're freaking out, Kristen Cole is a character in House of the Dragon, so we are watching him, mm, Kingsguard, <laughs> right now as a member of the Kingsguard. Yeah. So what the and fuck? <laughs> we know the king varies that he served. Viserys. And that, yeah, Viserys. And that King Aegon. What? Yeah. Definitely. What's her face, is kid? I haven't seen the newest episode yet. Oh, you haven't? No, I didn't. I just fell asleep as soon as I got home last Sunday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, spoiler alert for House of the Dragons, I guess Aegon becomes king. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but I really want to know Kingmaker. Yeah. And that he's the best and the worst. Mm-hmm. Because <sighs> Jamie says he was a bit of both. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's so interesting. And I was genuinely like, oh shit, like, does he kill Rhaenyra or something? Mm -hmm. and like make Aegon king that way yeah I got pretty scared <laughs> yeah. this way. but now I'm starting to think it's something else Ooh. and I'm not gonna tell you because you should watch the latest episode yeah I should <laughs> there's nothing like there's no answer in it but it makes me think Ooh. you know mm -hmm. that things could be going another direction <laughs> Ooh. But I, I'm fascinated, and I wonder if Jamie's next chapter will talk more about Kristen Cole. Because mm -hmm. this is, like, a very random thing to bring up and then not address again. Yeah. <laughs> Why <laughs> did you point him out, Jamie? Yeah. And would George really bring that up if he wasn't going to do something with it? Mm-hmm. Right? Unless, like, he's not going to expect you to know, especially at this time, who Kristen yeah. Cole is. No. He didn't have. This was long before Fire and Blood. Yeah. 
This makes me wonder if Jamie relates to Kristen Cole. Yeah, he was looking at that sheet when Loris came in. Yeah. That chapter. His page or whatever. Yeah, yeah, his page. And it's funny that Kristen Cole was Kingmaker and Jamie is Kingslayer. Kingslayer. <laughs> Ah, uh, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Hey everyone, just a quick aside. We just became affiliates of Buzzsprout, which is the hosting platform we use for our podcast. If you are interested in creating your own podcast, please consider using Buzzsprout. It made it easy to get our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and dozens of other streaming platforms. They also provide you with a podcast website, detailed analytics to see how your episodes are performing, and tons of guides on how to improve your listenability. And if you follow our link in the episode description, you will get a $20 Amazon gift card when you sign up for a paid plan, and it helps support our show. Thank you. Back to the episode. Ready for some Cersei? I am. This right, was chapter 17. Chapter. Yeah. Involving a long council meeting. <laughs> oh my god, I'm fucking hyped. <laughs> That's sarcasm. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. Three men show up with a rotting dwarf head for Cersei. Unfortunately, the head has a nose, so it's not Tyrion. Uh, she lets them go instead of punishing them for killing an innocent man. She doesn't want to, you know, prevent or scare other people from bringing her dwarf heads. I'm and, like, she like, would want a mountain of them just to get to Tyrion. Yeah, like, I'm kind of surprised she isn't just telling them to kill every dwarf they see. Right. Like, it seems like something Knowing she her. would do. Yeah, but maybe she mm -hmm. just can't because it would look bad. Maybe she's hoping uh, some dwarves are still killing each other to find Tyrion. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, like, exposing. Him. Yeah, like, having them come and be like, I have a dwarf and... <laughs> She just wants everyone to be working into finding Tyrion for her, maybe. Mm. Eh, she probably looks down on dwarfs. <laughs> yeah, she probably hates them all because of Tyrion. Yeah. She had recently had a nightmare about the witch in the woods from her memories. She never told anyone about it because the witch had told her that the prophecy won't come true if she told anyone and that she would instantly forget about it. So... This is a memory that she has that it's completely her. Okay. Didn't the prophecy also say that she would lose all her children? Yes. So why does she want it to come true? She would rather be queen and have no children than have children and not be a queen? That's gross. Probably. Am I right interpreting it that she way? She probably thinks as long as she is queen, nothing oh. can happen your children. Oh. But that's not what the brother said. Well, she's queen, so she can change to prophecy. <laughs> uh, she really thinks she's the queen of the Seven Kingdoms, huh? Yeah. She and Kyburn head to a small council meeting where they're all waiting for her. As they walk down to the meeting, Kyburn tells her that he had prepared a skull for delivery to Prince Doran. And he prepared a box. Cersei says to just send it in a bag for all she cares. Initially, I thought, is this Auburn? <laughs> like, I didn't quite know who it was. Oh, uh, I thought right away that it was the mountain. Oh. <laughs> but then I was mm -hmm. like, huh? This isn't what happens in the show. <laughs> yeah, that's why my first thought was Auburn. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, wouldn't that be super insulting to send back Oberyn's skull in a bag? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you really that far, like, deranged, <laughs> Cersei? I mean, they do that. They sent Ned's bones back, didn't they? They did. In a bag. In a box. It was in a box, so that's probably what it was. Yeah. Like, box is not as disrespectful as in a bag. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? Just a burlap sack. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they like pull the head out and it has like the the texture of the sack indented on his cheek. He grows. He's just <laughs> rotting in there. Ew! Cersei had named Kyburn the new master of whispers. And Varys's little birds. 
had soon begun selling their whispers to him. Hmm. In the show, Cersei makes Kyburn take over Pycelle yeah. as the maester. So it's very interesting that in the books, he's actually the master of whispers. Huh. Maybe... Hmm. That's an interesting choice. Were they phasing out Pycelle at this point in the show? I think so. Okay, maybe that's why. Probably? Yeah. Huh. She, like, accuses him of not being a very good maester after the death of Joffrey, I think. Oh, I see. Like, losing his stuff. Uh-huh. Maybe. I don't quite remember. It's been a while. Yeah. Um, when they arrive at the small council meeting, she introduces Kyburn as Lord Kyburn, which appalls Maester Pycelle and leaves him sputtering. <laughs> <laughs> Maester Pycelle is like, kind of snobby, I think. Like, nose up in the air. It seems really offended at these lowborn people being made lords and ladies. Oh, yeah. He's like, what has this man done to deserve mm -hmm. what I was born with? <laughs> My brand. <laughs> Money and land. <laughs> Wait, no, no, no. Mr. Pycelle's a maester. Born. He wouldn't have any of that. It depends if he was highborn <laughs> before yeah. going into this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maester school. Maester school. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she had replaced everyone on this small council with people that she believes are loyal to her. There's Orton Merriweather, I guess, like Lady Merriweather's husband, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, he is her new Juice. Juice. Justicar? Juicecar? Huh? Justicar. <laughs> What? <laughs> I think it was just a car. Just a car? <laughs> Hang on. I don't remember what I wrote. Uh, the King's <laughs> Justice? Yeah, probably that's what it is. But yeah. it was like just a car or something when she. Yeah, that's a, a representative and enforcer of the King or Ruler's Justice. I die. So, wait, wasn't that, like, Illin Payne's job? Yeah, what happened so here? that's what he- Was he fired? Uh, I feel like it was- Illin Payne <laughs> is working in the dungeons. Oh, it's he? But he's mean? the king's justice! That- That's why mm -hmm. he works in the dungeons. Yeah. Wait, I'm confused. <laughs> Shit. Mm -hmm. I need to open this chapter now. Like, was there even a just- just a card in on the small council meeting under the last kings like what i mean ill and pain definitely never sat on the small council no justiciar justiciar okay maybe he makes laws the english form of the medieval latin term justiciaris or justititiaris <laughs> okay man of justice or judge during the Middle oh. Ages in England, the chief justiciar was roughly equivalent to a modern prime minister of the United Kingdom as the monarch's chief minister. Okay. Okay. So I think it's just administrative stuff. Maybe. Early English judicial official of the king who, unlike all other officers of the central administration, was not a member of the king's official household. The justiciarship originated in the king's need for a responsible subordinate who could take a wide view of the affairs of the kingdom, act as regent when the king was abroad, and on other occasions take charge of those matters with which the king had no time to deal. So, uh, this just sounds like the hand. Like an assistant manager, whereas the hand is the manager? <laughs> uh... Advise her role, and then he just picks up. <laughs> okay, maybe, or... yeah. <laughs> and then what what would the king be then? He would be like the owner. CEO. <laughs> CEO, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's how I'm getting it. Okay. There is Giles Rosby as her treasurer. Orain Waters, which is Waters is a bastard name. Um, he's a bastard mm -hmm. of Driftmark. Hmm. And he is her Grand Admiral. Uh, and her hand is Sir Harry's Swift, who she thinks of as stupid. 
and easy to control. Like, why do you want? <laughs> She's completely forgotten the purpose of a hand. I think she <laughs> doesn't think she needs she doesn't... one understand the roles that she's dishing out probably she just wants to be surrounded by yes men ah. um, she doesn't care whether they can do the job she just wants them to do what she tells she them wants. to yeah I wholeheartedly agree <laughs> yeah <laughs> and Sir Harry Swift is her uncle Kevin's wife's father. Wow. Yeah. So that's why. Another power move. Oh my god. This is just embarrassing. This is all gonna blow up in her face and I can't fucking wait. <laughs> it makes for it to be really interesting. Oh, it's gonna be so satisfying. It is. When this shit starts crumbling. I kind of enjoy reading from her chapters because, bruh, she's so conceited. Like, it's so <laughs> well done. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's done in a way that it's, so it's not it's not so in your face that it's like, okay, this is ridiculous and cartoonish. It's oh, done no. in a way that it's, it's subtle enough that you don't even really know what it is for a while. It, like, takes a bit of time to identify why she acts this way. I like it. <laughs> and, yeah, it's, like... It's so realistic when it comes to actually exactly. meeting someone. Exactly. Because, <laughs> like, so... someone... If you meet a person like this, like, it just feels kind of off for a while, right? Yeah, it takes a bit, like... And you can't That's quite... That's a thing to say. <laughs> yeah, you can't quite figure out why... Why these things they say are, like, weird or why they bother you and... Until, then you're like, uh, <laughs> until you oh, finally say the word, <laughs> like, narcissist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Anyway, as the meeting begins, she learns of the state of Dorne and promises everyone that she has had Sir Gregor Clegane's skull cleaned, and it's going to be sent to Prince Doran soon, who she thinks of as bothersome, as if he's uh, just a flea buzzing around her. When he's like, literally, like, saved her ass. She doesn't quite understand or respect him, like, at all. She fucking doesn't respect anybody. No, in her world, she's like, I'm the only one who is, uh, deserves to be treated, like, above everyone. And this will be her downfall. Yes. Harry Swift informs her of the sparrows infesting the city. There are around 2,000 in the city, and there's more arriving every day. Ah, Cersei! This story arc, I remember this one. Oh, uh, yeah, the sparrows? Shame. <laughs> Shame. <laughs> I'm very interested. Yeah, um, I, I can't wait to see how it's different from the show. They seem a little bit different from the show. There's 2,000 in the city, there's more arriving every day, and Cersei, she likes it. She likes the idea. And she said it's high time that the Faith started cleansing the city of evil. And it made her think of how Stannis worships the Lord of Light. She just doesn't, she stays, it's like, doesn't like it. <laughs> doesn't like the Lord of Light? Like, she thinks of it as, like, demonic. Mm. And, like, probably other religions as well. I mean, she's not wrong <laughs> about the Lord of Light. <laughs> <laughs> Kinda. I mean, Melisandre what? literally gave birth to a shadow demon. She straight up did. Like, that's blood magic. And she sacrifices people to the flames. She freaking does. Yep. Anyway. The table... The table. Huh? The table starts speculating uh, the next septon. And while they do, Cersei eyeballs Orin Waters. Orin Waters. Oh, fucking um, course. His hair is described as more silvery than gold, and she kind of compares him to Prince Rhaegar? Mm. Is he a Targaryen bastard? Or Rainwaters. Huh. Because I know Targaryens are known for having silver or gold hair, or a mix of both in, these, in the books here. Ah. I mean, I don't think George would have put that in there without knowing that that's the implication. 
Hmm. I want to know who Orane Waters is. Oran. Orane? I feel like it would be like in a British accent. Okay, let's try. Oran. Oran. <laughs> Oran Waters. Orane. Orane doesn't sound right. Orane sounds kind Oran. of feminine. Yeah. Oran? Maybe? Oran? Oran? Probably Oran, maybe. Yeah. Turns out it's Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, it's um, pronounced Fred. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> she wonders if he will shave his beard for her, and she knows that he wants her. Oh my god! Uh... Yeah. Pycelle has a letter from the Vale. It's a declaration signed by the several lords of the Vale saying that they are massing men below the Eyrie with the intention of removing Littlefinger as Lord Protector of the Vale, forcibly if they must. Harry asks if Baelish has asked for help, and uh, apparently he seems pretty unconcerned in his last letter. And Harry asks if they asked for the King's help, and they didn't. So Harry is like, well, let's do nothing. <laughs> and Cersei agrees, and they move on. <laughs> Orin Waters wants to restore their fleet by building ten more Drummonds, which had a Google and their warships. Okay. How do you say it? Drummonds? Drummonds. Yeah, they're the kind of warships where you gotta paddle. <laughs> oh. Okay. They, Got it. When they need to speed up, they can set, go downstairs and stick out their oars. <laughs> yeah, stick out those oars. <laughs> In order to pay for this, Cersei suggests not repaying the Iron Bank until after the war and thinks that they'll probably whine at her a little bit, but like, whatever. Uh... Uh, everyone agrees with her, except for Pycelle, who says in a quivering voice that that is a bad idea not to pay back the Iron Bank. Cersei dismisses him, moves on. Okay, I told you. She only Whoa. wants yes men. Yeah. <laughs> People I can't who don't wait quite till understand. Oh my god. The fucking what the iron, iron bank, bank comes for her. Uh, the Hibernate. iron bank don't play. Yeah. You can fucking tell by the name, dude. <laughs> Kyburn informs them that the sparrows had been spreading gossip that the crown was involved with the red wedding. Cersei isn't very concerned about this and says that once Lord Walder dies, which must be soon, they could convince the next Lord Frey to behead a few Freys as punishment for the Red Wedding. Okay. I mean, that's one solution, I guess. Yeah, so her solutions basically do nothing. And then... While the old man lives. Kill some Freys later on. Yeah. And that's gonna be good enough. Yep. That'll be good enough to prove to everyone that they weren't involved in the Red Wedding. Yep. Maureen Waters updates everyone that the Golden Company has broken its contract with Mir and have begun to work for Stannis, apparently. That's what that guy's lover kept telling him. Oh. In the other chapter, the guy who's uh, guarding the princess, Marcella? Okay. He told her that the Golden Company... No, she kept telling... Not Marcella, but uh, the girl he was seeing. Yeah. The... the Princess? Yeah, that, that princess. <laughs> mm -hmm. She kept telling him that uh, the Golden Company has broken their contract with Mir. Ooh. That must mean something. Yes. I don't know if they joined uh, Stannis, maybe? But I don't know... What? Okay, I need, what's the Golden Company? Golden Company. Um, they're the group that. What's his face? One of Dan Danny's lovers was in the the Cell Sword. Okay. The group he was in when they met was the Golden Company. It's like an army of Cell Swords. And they are. They had a contract with with Liss. Apparently. Just as like. God? But this is its contract with Mir. Oh, Mir, sorry. 
The Colton Company is a company of cell source founded by Sir Agor Rivers, a great bastard known as Bitter Steel. Considered the finest and most powerful company of the free cities, with some considering them the most honorable. Despite the Ooh. notorious unreliability of cell swords, the Golden Company is reputed to have never broken a contract. Oh! Okay. Their motto is, our word is good as gold. Okay. Mm. What would make them break this contract? With Mir. Mm -hmm. With Mir? Is that right? Yeah, Mir. Okay. Um, let's see here. The Golden Company breaks its contract with the free city of Mir, despite looming war with neighboring Lys and Tirosh. According to sailors in King's Landing, they are making for Volantis. In Dorn, Princess Ariane Martel tells Sir Eris O'Cart that the Golden Company has broken its contract with Mir. She uses this information in her attempt to... Okay, we know this already, so it's not really a spoiler. In her attempt to convince him to help with her scheme to crown Princess Marcella Baratheon as Queen of the Andals, the Rhoynar and the First Men. During Queen Regent Cersei Lannister's small council meeting, Orain Waters reveals that the Golden Company has broken its contract with Mir. He has heard many men say that Stannis Baratheon has hired them and is bringing them across the Narrow Sea. Cersei then tells the council that Kyburn heard from a Mirish galley that the Golden Company are making their way to Volantis. So if they mean to cross to Westeros, they are marching the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Everything. Okay, so... Don't know what that's gonna lead to, but... Yeah. Okay. We know something has happened to make the Golden Company do something they've never done before. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, I'm oh. so stupid. I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know what it is? I'm guessing it's Danny. Yeah, it's Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I'm dumb. That's how it goes in the show. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't fucking remember that at all. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, one of her armies alongside the Unsullied is the Golden Company. Mm. Least, um, what's his face's followers? Sexy uh, boy's followers. Sexy boy. Sure. <laughs> you know, we call his name Nomo. Sexy boy. We'll call him Sexy Boy. Anyway, now that we've solved that. Uh, <laughs> so Cersei's unbothered. No, wait. Pycelle also pipes up that he has heard that Stannis has been consorting with the Wildlings. Wait, sorry. And before maybe... we move on, oh. I just want to point out again how fucking clueless Cersei is. She is, like, so... Fucking dumb. dumb. Like, oh, <laughs> fucking she's so dumb. dumb. Like, like can you? So dumb. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she's actually like so dumb. Um, <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> like, actually, so stupid. Uh, so dumb. <laughs> no, but seriously, Tywin, if he heard this information, would immediately be like, find out why they broke their contract. Yeah, he'd want to know what happened. Yeah, like, you don't think that this could- she's so short-sighted. Mm -hmm. She does not- she's only thinking, oh, they're marching that way, that means they're not a problem. Are you fucking dumb, bitch? Are you fucking There's stupid? going on. Pay attention. You're Good so fucking dumb. God, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Then I take that calling her a bitch, though, because I don't like calling women bitches. Oh, wow. <laughs> So apparently Stannis has been consorting with wildlings, trying to, you know, probably get them to join his cause. And Cersei is also unbothered by it. Oh my god! <laughs> Just does not care. She's like, Stannis doesn't have the gold for the Golden Company, and Ruth Bolton will have no trouble fending off the wildlings, because that's what the Northmen do. That She's like Cersei. so fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this reminds Cersei of the bad news that Ned Stark's bastard has been voted Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. Oh, terrible <laughs> news. She's convinced that Lord Snow is a traitor since he housed and fed Stannis and his men and starts the orders to stop sending the Watch men until Snow is removed. Hybern, though, mentions us that instead... They should send a hundred men in disguise to forcefully remove snow. Mm. Cersei is delighted at this, and she ends the council. 
Rain Waters, though, has something else to say before everyone, like, leaves and he mentions that he's been hearing tales of dragons. But Cersei just has no time for such stuff. And she leaves. Bet it has nothing to do with the Golden Company. <laughs> nope. Fuck. Mm. I mean... Arriving. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, like, <laughs> it's so... so... I love that she's gonna get fucked. But it's so yeah. infuriating how amazing she thinks she is. Oh, man. <laughs> it's like... Oh, man. Ugh. Head in yeah. the hands kind of cringe, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I love her chapters. Go on. <laughs> Arriving at her apartment, Cersei sends for Sir Osney Kettleback. When he arrives, um, she orders everyone out, and they flirt a little before Osni grabs at her boob and initiates sexy times. Gross. Um, she turns him down, saying that he did her a valiant service once, and that was the one time that was his reward for that. <laughs> Apparently, they did the do yeah, before. And <laughs> but she touches him downstairs and tells him, that she wants him to do something else for her. She has this elaborate plot where she wants Sir Osney to seduce and sleep with Queen Marjorie, get caught, join the Night's Watch, and then assassinate the Lord Commander, Lord Snow, and then receive a lordship and be released from the wall and uh, get to have Cersei again as a reward. Yeah, let's rely <laughs> on one untrustworthy man. Why not? <laughs> And also, <laughs> you can't take people from the wall! <laughs> Whoa, man. She is just above the law, apparently. Of course. Well, she, she, says, she says to him, Bet a girl and kill a boy. Do you have the courage, Sir Knight? <laughs> uh, and he says, yeah. They kiss with tongue before she stops it. And then she asks him to think of her that night and dismisses him. Afterwards, she feels so very proud of how sh well she is ruling Westeros. She kind of wishes her father can see her now. He would be fucking ashamed. <laughs> he would be just full of scorn. <laughs> yeah. Man. He would be embarrassed. Yeah. So dumb. Uh. It's actually so cringe. I don't think I've cringed so hard. <laughs> reading a book <laughs> oh yeah at least not Cersei recently <laughs> oh yeah no. later Cersei uh, summons Lady Merryweather and she asks her to check on Queen Marjorie uh, the next morning and then that night Cersei dreams that Tyrion's head is brought to her and that she has it bronzed and placed in her chamber pot it's very nice so she's just gonna shit on his head Shit and piss. Okay, great. And that's that chapter. Okay, so... There were morning bells going on. There were bells, and I didn't quite understand what they were. <laughs> they they were for mourning. So, like, grief kind of mourning. Uh-huh. So I was wondering if they were for Clegane? Definitely not. Yeah, because he would be a traitor. But I don't know who... Me what neither. Like, was it still Tywin's? Oh! Wait, was it? Was Jaime doing something with Tywin in the last chapter? Yeah, he was taking his body out of... So is this what she was doing during that time, then? Maybe. Okay, that it's... would make sense. I was pretty confused as to what... Why are there bells ringing? <laughs> okay, I think they're they're almost certainly for Tywin. Mm-hmm. Because he okay. was all like... Uh, Kevin was like, where's your sister? And he was all like, she's got shit to do. So okay. This is probably what she was doing. Ah. Okay, solve that mystery. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I think she also mentioned, she either mentioned this or thought about it, that there was another king's guard who bedded the king's wife. Yeah. And there was, she, she also mentioned In an history. egg on the unworthy. I wonder, did she? That sounds familiar. Yeah, she mentioned an egg on the unworthy and Ooh. a king's guard who fucked a king's wife. And so this is where I'm like, okay, 
how does House of the Dragon fit into this? And is this the continuation of Kristen Cole being brought up in the last chapter? Maybe, but I don't think Rhaenyra would be considered a king's wife unless there is someone else Kristen Cole is screwing around with. Which I don't know, because I didn't see the last episode. Nothing's revealed like that, so don't worry. But it makes me wonder if he ends up fucking Allison. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe they had a little bond the last time I saw them. I don't know. (laughs) I, I mean, and who's Aegon the Unworthy? Right? Like, is that her son, Aegon? What would make him unworthy? There's so many Aegons, but I am interested. Yeah. Like, yeah, this is... <laughs> I'm, like, not even interested in the actual goings-on in the world right now. I'm like, tell me more <laughs> about the stuff that relates to House of the Dragon. <laughs> I'm too invested in that right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh... It's a good freaking show. Watch it, people. <laughs> yeah. And, you, you know, that was... That was also a lie. I am interested to see how Cersei gets totally fucked. <laughs> yes. And what's gonna happen with, like, Osney Kettleback trying to fuck Marjorie and then kill John? Like, do you, like, think he's gonna succeed? Because I kind of don't. I don't think he's even gonna get past Marjorie's door. Yeah. <laughs> I like think... She... Uh... Oh, Marjorie... you know what? <gasps> You know what? What? Oh my god, I'm a genius. (laughs) I think Lady Meriwether is going to find out what Osney Kettleplack is trying to do. She's going to tell Marjorie, and then they're going to feed a lie to Cersei together. Ooh, that's fun. Yeah. You you think she's a double agent, Lady Meriwether? Oh, I think she's on, yeah, I think she's on Marjorie's side. Marjorie's? (laughs) Yeah. I, think I would Cersei's love a fool. that. <laughs> yeah, I would love that because Cersei really likes <laughs> Lady Meriwether. <laughs> yeah, and she she was so she barely knows her, and she's just immediately yeah. so trusting of her. Mm-hmm. Like, wh- are you dumb? Are you dumb? Are you dumb? <laughs> like Tywin would never. <sighs> no. God. And she's, yeah, she's just surrounded herself with yes men, thinking that they are loyal Mm -hmm. to her, when all they're doing is saying whatever she wants to hear to get what they want. That's what I believe anyway. She rewards her yes men. Yeah. Fuck, dude. (laughs) This is fun, though. (laughs) Mm -hmm. This is so fun. Uh, So you're gonna come up and fuck yes! All right, that's going to be it for this episode. If you want more of the podcast, please follow us on Instagram. You can follow the podcast at Tigbab Podcast or follow us individually. My handle is Crimby and Jess's is Jess.Egan24. You can also find us on Facebook. Just search Tigbab Podcast or Tea is Good, Books are Better, and we will show up there. Also, please subscribe to our good friend Baram Barami on YouTube. He's the one who made our jingle, which you heard at the start of the episode, and he makes some really cool music. That's B-A-H-R-A-M. You can also find him on Spotify as Barambient. That's B-A-H-R-A-M-B-I-E-N-T. And please check us out on Patreon. Patreon.com slash tea is good books are better. We have a few different tea themed tiers with fun rewards, including outtakes, BTS stuff, and mini episodes in which we force our brother to watch Game of Thrones, which he absolutely hates. So it makes for some fun discussions slash arguments. <laughs> Finally, if you would be willing to share the podcast with your family and your friends, it would be a huge help to us to grow the podcast. Thank you so much. And join us next time for... Who do we have next time? The Iron Captain. The Iron Captain. And, and is also... The drowned man? Sorry, the who? The Drowned Man. Oh, that guy again? Surprisingly, yeah. We're going to be in the Iron Islands next time. So it's the Iron Captain and then the Drowned Man. So is that... Mm-hmm. That's a Victorian? And... I think... Ares? I don't know what Victorian and Aeron Greyjoys. Aeron. 
So I think Victarion is the Iron Captain, right? Yeah. And then Aaron is the Drowned Man. Yeah. And we've had an Aaron chapter already, right at the start of the book. Mm-hmm. But we haven't had a Victarion yet? No. Okay, so that's interesting. Mm-hmm. So there might be the only one. Oh, I see. Well, we'll see what's going on with their king's moot. Mm-hmm. See if they voted anyone in. Do we actually get to see the other one in person now? You're on. You're on. All right, next time, Iron Islands. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye. Bye.